Hey everybody, I'm back for a second week. Two weeks in a row. I guess this is like a thing. So I figured if it's a thing, you need like an intro song, right? So I could go get one, or I could just do one real quick, so. Here we go, we gotta make it like pumped up, right? So it's gonna get everybody excited, so. Here you go, ready. There you go. Welcome to week two. Last week we did Kotlin multi-platform compiling to JavaScript and running that in the console of the web browser. This week we're doing iOS with the exact same code base. We're picking up exactly where we left off last week. So if you haven't seen the video, I don't know if I can do this thing, but maybe in the link, click this video somewhere and it'll watch the video from last week on how we set up JavaScript project. But here's the project right here. We've got the JavaScript project all set up. It compiles out to show you in the build directory here, this uh, final JavaScript file that we can run in the web browser. And all it really does is it prints out hello world, Sam. So we looked at the Kotlin code that's actually running here. We can look in common main and Kotlin and the hello world, Sam has a print high function. And when it runs, it prints out hello world, Sam. So what we want to do is have this actually run in iOS. Seems pretty hard. Um, the way I'm doing it today is actually not starting out with a Kotlin multi-platform mobile project where you actually have it set up already to run on iOS and Android. I've been creating a library here. So it's just a piece of code that I want to be able to run on different platforms. So the way I'm going to do that today is I'm going to export it as an iOS framework. The way I do that first is have to make this, I have to make this project build as an iOS framework. The way I do that is I use my cheat sheet like last week and I grab this over and drop it in my build Gradle KTS. So let's go ahead and go in there. And as of right now, we have configurations for the JVM, the Java virtual machine, JavaScript. And now we're gonna add one below here for iOS X64. So this means it'll run for iOS on an X64 bit processor. I'm running on a 60, um, 64 bit X86 machine right now. And so I can go ahead and run that on my simulator on an iOS device. So we can check that out. It's gonna create a binary framework with the name, hello world Sam, like everything else has been. So what we wanna do now is just go ahead and run our build now that we've added this in. No additional work because the code that we're compiling is in common main. That means any target that we're going to compile to, it's gonna have all that code we have in there and actually compile it out to whatever the target is. Let's go in our terminal like last week, Gradle W build, and it will build it out. Now this is the first time I've added the iOS uh, target to this project, but it's going ahead and link debug framework iOS 64, x64. And when that runs, it'll end up creating a bin directory inside of build. There it goes. So as it continues to run, there will be a debug and a release framework. We're gonna be using the release framework today. I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. Like I've been calling out, like I'm not a professional at this. I've basically been discovering how I can get this to work and I wanted to share it to you so that you would know. And so I could look back at this and go, wait, how did I do this? So super helpful. It finished building. Now I can go ahead in here and this directory doesn't always update. So we'll say reload from disk. And in this release framework, we have our framework. So this is actually like the binary code that gets run. Here are the headers. So this is, uh, if you've done C++ before, I've never done really done Objective-C or any iOS development. So other than just like hitting a sample app and hitting go, this is new for me as well. So inside of here, the .h file is really kind of like an interface really, it's describing what code is going to be there. But down here towards the bottom, we will have our hello world Sam code, probably towards the end, there it is. So it'll be hello world Sam KT and the actual method is going to be print high. So we'll end up running this code. So let's open up an Xcode project and get started. So I'm gonna open up Xcode, launch that, and we'll be creating a brand new project today. New project. And in this case, I only care about iOS, or I'm only interested in iOS. Uh, I could create other sort of applications on here, Mac OS, um, iPad, and so forth. I'm just gonna say iOS, that should work on anything. So iPad application, or iOS application, Next, we're gonna call it hello world Sam iOS. All right, we're in our iOS project and we wanna go ahead and add our Kotlin multi-platform framework that we've exported. 
We want it to show up down here. And the way we do that is we go into the Xcode project settings under the general tab, we go down and we find the frameworks, libraries, and embedded content section. Here we'll hit the add button and we'll go ahead and add this directly as a file. All right, so here's the directory that has our full project from our multi-platform Hello World Sam project. We're gonna go in that build directory that we talked about and then into bin in iOS 64, release framework and pick our release framework folder. So we'll go ahead and open that and then we'll see hello sam.framework shows up. Now what I expected to happen was if I started writing code in here and I could do it in a nit block, just like you could in Kotlin where it runs some code, that I could go ahead in here and start writing hello world sam. And it's showing the iOS module, which is the name of this, but it's not showing my Kotlin multi-platform framework. So then I thought, well, maybe I have to import it. So I come in here, I do hello world Sam, and it didn't show up either. So I did some Googling around and I found a blog post which told me how to do this. So we'll go back into the project settings, go into the build settings tab, and scroll down to search paths. Inside of here, you can just cl double click in framework search paths and we can add one ourselves. Now I've gone ahead and cheated and I'm gonna just gonna paste out the link, but this is the link to my the IntelliJ project, which is Hello World Sam, that Kotlin multi-platform project, the bin directory, build, iOS 64, and the release framework folder. So I'll go ahead and add that in, and that will do the trick. It's gonna be pretty magical now. Now I'll come back over to my Swift project, and I'll start writing, import, hello, there it is, hello world Sam, hello world. So I'm not actually running iOS code yet, but I was so excited when I figured this out. Now what we can do is we can start auto-completing. Hello world Sam, dot, we get all this stuff in here. What is this? I honestly don't know, but it's gotta be stuff that allows the Kotlin multi-platform to actually run inside of here. I did find out if I just start searching for it, I can find hello world Sam KT dot print high. And all of these things that we saw here were actually described, like I mentioned before, in our headers file. So over here we had hello world Sam KT and print high. And this header file is actually what's getting read over in Xcode to show us this auto-completing. So, I like that. Now let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. I'm gonna hit play and it's going to run on the iPhone 11 simulator I have. Pull that up. Hello world. So that's, that's what normally comes up uh, with this sample app, which is Swift UI, but it actually printed out hello world Sam down here that ran for my Kotlin multi-platform code. In order to show you this actually worked, let's do it three times, save it and run it again, and let's see what happens. So here's our simulator booting up. Hello world Sam, three times! Just, just three, either hand. But I'm super excited. So we have code that now runs in JavaScript, the JVM, and iOS. So cool. So anyway, I'm super liking this. I'm gonna check it out more. This is the second week in a row. Will there be a third? I don't know yet. We'll find out. But thanks for joining, and hope you learned something. Cheers.